I, you know, every time I talk, I always say that, uh, you know, what I did was wrong. Um, I broke the law. I deserved to be punished. And uh, I may have even deserved to go to prison. Uh, but what I would submit is that I didn't deserve what I got once I arrived there. I was in prison from 17 to 21. Uh, at a time when most kids are off to college, or a lot of kids are off to college, I like to say that I got my first undergraduate degree in prison culture. Um, you know, late adolescence is a, a time when uh, we're all dealing with issues of sexuality, identity, separation from family, and figuring out where and how we fit in the world. Um, on my first day in general population, some inmates offered me a, a drink of spud juice, pruno, um, homemade liquor. And what I did know is they spiked my drink with Thorazine, uh, a heavy sedative they gave the mentally ill prisoners, and then I was gang raped. And when these men were done, what they did was they literally flipped a coin in the air to decide which one of them would own me. And for the balance of my time in prison, I was the property of another inmate. New York State recently hired me to, 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 to write and direct two inmate orientation videos on prison sexual safety. Um, and these are videos that will be seen not only by every prisoner in the state of New York, but all incoming prisoners, and giving them very practical uh, advice on how to avoid sexual abuse. Um, and what was exciting about the project was uh, they allowed us to use actual inmates to deliver the information. And you know, things are very different now than they were when I was in prison 30 years ago. You know, that the notion of, you know, the violent gang rapes where somebody gets grabbed in a cell and 10 guys jump on you, that's very rare now. It's um, um, more uh, subtle manipulation. It's what uh, we call in the States grooming. Um, uh, it's a process of trickery. Every inmate coming into prison is um, afraid of rape. That's probably the, the, the number one concern in their minds. Um, but what they're afraid of and what they're looking for is not the way it actually is. But the predators know this, and they play on that, and they take advantage of that. So they will slip up and befriend the new, com the new inmate coming in, um, or they'll trick them by giving them things and getting them in debt so that they owe them. Uh, or they'll tell them, listen, the only reason nothing's happened to you is because I've been looking out for you. And doing it with me is better than doing it with whoever can catch you. I was at a place in my life where um, I wanted to go back and do some, some work in this area. It was almost, when I sat down to write my book, I wrote a book about my experience in prison, and, and the, the writing of the book was really, I think, a, a, an ongoing continuation of my therapy. Um, uh, I wanted to purge that experience. I wanted to understand it. And uh, I, at the same time, I got involved in a, a lot of, uh, of uh, advocacy work around prisoner rape. Um, I'm the former president of Stop Prisoner Rape. I testified on Capitol Hill in support of the Prison Rape Elimination Act. Um, the Prison Rape Elimination Act was the first ever federal legislation to address rape in prison. Um, I worked with the PREA Commission. I uh, worked with the U.S. Bureau of Justice Statistics on the survey instruments for probably one of the most comprehensive studies of prisoner rape ever conducted. Um, I've helped uh, write some of the standards, and uh, I've been blessed to have been able to participate on many levels over the last dozen years on uh, PREA work. Um, you know, it, most of my uh, contribution has just been to, uh, to speak as a survivor uh, and to, uh, you know, lend a voice for uh, the countless voiceless inmates who um, aren't able to for any number of reasons. Um, you know, I, I suffered many years uh, uh, with shame uh, about what went on in prison. I blame myself for many years. Um, it was, after all, my choices that landed me in prison. Um, sexual violence is not something easy to talk about. Um, but I, I hit a turning point where it was, and when I got out of prison, when I was 21, I. I was determined that what happened in prison was going to stay in prison and I was never going to talk about it. And uh, I kind of went through this um, arc of not wanting to talk about it to wanting to tell the world what goes on.
um, and shatter the silence of, of what's going on in our nation's prisons. When I went in to do the project, I, I had, uh, you know, a hidden agenda. It's, it, you know, I mean, it wasn't hidden. I was pretty open about it. But I had an agenda that it was, here's an opportunity where we can affect the inmate culture. We can influence the inmate culture and make a, a subtle shift that could have an enor enormous uh, uh, impact. Uh, a couple of years ago, I, I had the privilege of um, going on a, a, a delegation of, to South Africa where we toured a number of prisons there. They have a lot of, of uh, uh, sexual violence in, in prisons there, and their HIV rates are off the charts. Um, while we toured these prisons, I, I was struck by, by uh, uh, one thing in particular. There were two prisons where sexual abuse didn't happen. One was on the uh, Muslim cell block because the, the Muslim Brotherhood just doesn't tolerate that. And the other was in the political prisons. And that's because there was this brotherhood among men. Um, and so, you know, from that experience, I've often said, if there's a way that we could get the inmates to take this on themselves, where if the, if the men on the cell block say this isn't going to happen, it's not happening. And... I think, you know, the thing that's, that's always puzzled me is that there's a hierarchy in prison. And at the very bottom of that hierarchy are the child molesters. Um, there's, you know, you know, listen, a lot of inmates suffered sexual abuse before prison. So inmates don't like child molesters. Um, they're, they, they despise them. And just a, a step above that is rapists. Now, though they don't necessarily hate rapists, they don't have a lot of respect for rapists. And I always wondered, well, if, if there's such uh, disrespect or hatred towards this kind of sexual abuse, why do we tolerate it in our prisons? And when I posed that question to the inmates, you know, a lot of them thought, eh. See, there's another part of the inmate code uh, that inmates operate under, and it's this thing called mind your business. If it's got nothing to do with you, you don't get involved, right? So these between that and snitching, these are two very difficult hurdles to overcome. Um, but if we can start by just carving out that exception on snitching, that can make a, a big difference. But in the process of enrolling the inmates in what we were doing and letting them take ownership, I think that we've created an opportunity where it does become their business. And again, if the inmates say this isn't going to happen on our cell block, it's not going to happen.